Hello and welcome to Buy or Sell, coming to you from the No Holds Bar here at Equity Mates HQ. I am your host, Adam Kiley, regarded by many as one of the simplest minds in finance. Luckily for you, though, I'm joined by an expert to educate me and hopefully you on uh, how they're thinking about stocks and the stocks they're thinking about. Now, if you want a deep dive, take a long walk off a short jetty. This is Rapid Fire Buy or Sell. We're going to rip through as many stocks as we can in the time that we've got. Uh, we're not talking reckless, though. We will put our money where our mouth is. Uh, you can keep an eye on each stock on the Buy or Sell tracker on the Equity Mates website. But let's get into it. Uh, today, I am thrilled to be joined uh, by Henry Jennings, Senior Market Analyst at Marcus Today. Hi, Henry. Hi, Adam. Talking of simple minds, I think I fall into that category as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can promise you that uh, I will outshadow you in every regard when it comes to simple minds. Uh, yeah, lovely, lovely to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for thank you for making the time. My pleasure. Uh, now, before we get started, Henry, uh, I, it is the no holds bar here, uh, and I want you to relax. I want you to settle in, uh, and it is the most stocked bar in the world. So I would like to offer you a drink and. Times are good, uh, stock market's doing well. So the signature cocktail this week is the vodka and Red Bull market. Uh, can I tempt you in one of those, Henry, or something else perhaps? Um, I've always looked at value in terms of cocktails. And you know, in my younger days, the Long Island iced tea to me represented very good value because when you added up the number of shots of spirits in there, it always seemed to offer far more than just a boring, you know, uh, margarita right. or something. It just had a bit of tequila yeah. in it. Whereas the Long Island iced tea pretty much had everything in it. And I have to say, I did indulge probably once too often in the Long Island iced tea in my youth. Lovely, lovely. We uh, we ha we had another episode uh, earlier with uh, Julian McCormack, and he. He was talking about Tesla, and we had a signature cocktail called the Elon Island iced tea. In a uh, uh, nod to Elon Musk and Tesla, so uh, stick around if, if that's that's that could be right up your alley. Yeah, well, he's a far smarter than guy than I am. That's for say. Uh, <laughs> Julian's a lovely guy. Uh, he's always a bit bearish, though. He's always uh, talking uh, the bear side of things. But yeah, no, I, I think that's a great idea. The uh, the Elon. Yeah. Island iced tea. Long Island iced tea. It's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, it uh, is. In more ways, yeah. perhaps. But yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into your stocks, Henry. Uh, we've got a few to get to here. And we're going to start uh, with Light and Wonder, ASX LNW. This is not one I'd heard before. Currently at $136.62 on the ASX. And these guys make slot machines and gaming platforms for, according to their website, we create immersive content that forges lasting connections with players. Yeah, uh, Henry, <laughs> is that true? Well, it, it, co it, co it, it, uh, it creates lasting uh, contracts with uh, with players, I guess, because they're probably so much in debt from putting their money through the machines uh, with yeah. uh, Aristocrat as well. But this is a bit of an odd one, I guess, in terms of uh, you know Aristocrat's been a, a big high flyer, Ainsworth Gaming as well, AGI. Another one that the market has uh, fallen in love with recently as well, and I guess for good reason to some extent. Uh, Light and Wonder is more a US gaming technology company, and it's kind of a little bit overlooked, I guess, in our market. Volumes are right. not great, but it is a $12 billion uh, market cap company, so it's not small by any stretch of the imagination. It kind of quietly creeps up. It does have that exposure to gaming technology. It does have that exposure to, uh, I guess, the slot machines, casinos as well, discretionary yeah. spending. So it's it's kind of, I wouldn't say a poor man's aristocrat, but it's um, right. it probably sits somewhere between aristocrat and AGI in terms of uh, that gaming machine market. But it's it's a lot of it's overlooked. And I guess, you know, to some extent, some of that problem is because of the name of the stock, Light and Wonder. Uh, Light and Wonder, yeah. It's, it's LNW is the stock code. So it does get a little bit overlooked, I guess, because it's got a strange name. And I, I guess it's not the only one in the entertainment industry that does have a strange name. You've got Ooh Media and those sorts of things. So uh, yeah. there are some legislative, legislative, oh, here we go, uh, legislative approvals. That's easy for you to say, Adam. Uh, <laughs> sure. Long Island iced tea. Exactly. Sure. Well, ex uh, so uh, there are some uh, approvals in the pipeline, which could give it a bit of a tailwind as well. 
Um, potential right. analyst, there's a new uh, Dragon Train update coming, uh, content launches. You know, you it, don't have to tell me about the Dragon Train update, Henry. That's, uh, I've been holding out for months. <laughs> The dra- well, there you go. Well, I, who would have known? Who would have known that you were holding out for the Dragon Train? But uh, yeah, it's one of those sleeper stocks, I guess, that gets overlooked by the market. Yeah. But it's it quietly just kind of chugles away in the background. As I say, mm-hmm. it sits between, in some respects, Aristocrat and AGI in that sort of space. Uh, not as yeah. big, obviously, as Aristocrat, but bigger than AGI. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say that they're they're not just slot machines? It, it seems like they're kind of it's a very diverse range of it uh, is. gaming it platforms, is. right? I guess it is. I mean, that, that's the beauty of them. It, you know, with uh, Aristocrat is going into uh, a more diversified range of, uh, of gaming as well. Uh, these guys are kind of already there in that respect. So it has got a yeah. diversified range of, of gaming, not just uh, the slot machines. I guess a digital offering is you know you can kind yeah. of tailor that to whatever you like as long as you can tap into the zeitgeist so it's uh, certainly not too bad this one it's it's it, i guess right. it's one of those as i say it's a sleeper stock probably a long-term uh, hold buy kind of situation but um you know clearly right. some people might have a problem with it from an esg point of view but yeah. generally speaking you know if, if you can get your head around aristocrat and you get your head around agi and get your head around whole gaming to and there's not that many ways to uh, to get exposure to gaming in australia yeah. we've, we've got playside studios which is one uh they design uh electronic games etc so uh, that is another way to play it as well i guess all right light and wonder is a buy next up henry we're looking at csl limited asx <laughs> csl coming uh coming in at 284 dollars now hopefully investors didn't have a heart attack when csl's latest drug trial was a failure mainly because it was a heart attack prevention drug so that would have just been cruel irony yeah. uh where are we at with uh with csl well i guess csl is is almost un-australian not to like csl it has been a, a, a massive success story and it still is a success story the, the great thing that csl has got going for it and it once again proved it with the latest results was the yeah. collection center business that they have in the US, that network of collection centers. Now in the US, they don't donate blood. They yeah. donate blood in exchange for money. They get paid, yeah. they get paid for uh, paid for a pint. Uh, so the, here, here I've been giving it away for free. Well, here we give it away for free. I have to say, I've, I've not been able to uh, give it away for free uh, much because right. uh, I come from a land of mad cow. And uh, until oh, yeah. right, yeah. and until recently, I was uh, banned from uh, from donating blood. But in the US, that they basically sell their blood, and, and CSL has right. has built a pretty good uh, sort of world class beating network of collection centres, which has held up really well. That is the main yep. driver of the business. Now, uh, plasma, when they take the blood, they spin it into decent products, obviously, and more and more complicated products. They've also got the vaccine business, the flu vaccine business. All of this was firing pretty well in terms of results. The problem I have with CSL, and last year, I think it was last year, they did a pretty major acquisition of a company called Vifor, which uh, they spent a lot of money on. And certainly from the numbers we saw and the statement that we got out of CSL last reporting season, uh, which has just gone, we saw Vifor having a smidgling of a problem, just small problems there. Uh, one of the issues last year was uh, GLP-1, which is the Azempic uh, effect. Oh, yeah. And we saw CSL got sold down to 230 bucks, which I've got to say was bargain of the century yeah. probably. Uh, 230 yeah. bucks on the back of Azempic and, the, and the, its unintended benefits, I guess, you know, people use it or weight loss, but it also had some really good effects on kidney disease. And Vifor is mm. involved in the kidney business. It's involved in the uh, the iron treatments in, in, in the blood business. So CSL firing on two cylinders, the, uh, the flu right. vaccines and the plasma business and all the clever stuff that comes off that. But the Vifor, not great. Uh, it has right. it did rally from 230 to 300. They did have that unsuccessful drug trial, as you say. They've come back to around, what, 280 or something. Uh, it, it's yeah. definitely a hold, as I say. It's un-Australian not to like CSL. But but for me, you know, the jury's still out on the Vifor acquisition. It was a lot of money, one of those game changers, et cetera, you know, 
Aussie, yeah. Aussie company makes good, goes and buys something big overseas, stuffs it up. Um, that could, I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen with CSL, but it, right. it is a bit of a handbrake on the stock price. No, it's not a buy just at the moment at, at, the, at 284. We're not talking buy, we, we're talking hold. Well, you know what? The, the, the range is 260 to 300. So 280, yeah. 284, it kind of sits right in the middle. If it gets back yeah. down towards under 270, it's probably a screaming yeah. buy again. If it hits 300, it's a sell. Okay, very good. All right, next one we are going to look at is Treasury Wine Estate Limited, ASX TWE, currently trading at $11.40 on the ASX. Uh, profits are down, dividends being cut. Uh, yep. Largely because of their eight, their 19 crimes label <laughs> is down. And that's despite Snoop Dogg getting on board, which I'm incredibly disappointed about. Um, <laughs> I read a review of the 19 crimes Cali Red Wine uh, by Snoop Dogg, uh, and it said, it is the perfect wine for those who appreciate a bold and complex flavor profile. It pairs well with blunt, chronic, and sticky icky, making it a versatile wine that can be enjoyed on any occasion. Uh, Henry, it's a fake review, obviously. Yeah. Uh, buy or sell for you for Treasury Wine Estates? Yeah, that doesn't really sound like the sort of thing that Snoop Dogg would say, does it, verbatim? I'm not sure that's one of his quotes. <laughs> um, I, I have to say I like Treasury Wine. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, not just the product, obviously. Uh, the, I like any wine. Yeah, well, that's, I'm not. I don't care. Red, white, or in between, I don't really care. But um, you know, the, the great, the interesting thing, I guess, about the Snoop Dogg and the 19 Crimes was the guy that kind of launched it left a little while ago and went to their competition, and right. it, and the market kind of made a little bit of a thing about it at the time. But it it kind of slipped a little bit under the radar to some extent. But Snoop Dogg and the 19 Crimes has been on a little bit of a a little bit of a slippery slide for a little while. The reason uh, that I like Treasury Wine Estates is, is a, I guess, a couple of reasons, apart from Snoop Dogg, is that they did make a big acquisition in the US. They're pushing very hard in the US. They're trying to make their premium wines the way to go and, and trying to you know, really get out, I guess, to some extent of the, um, the cheap rubbish that I buy in the bottle shops. <laughs> um, yeah. The other thing, of course, is that they've got the China syndrome. We've got the potential that China reopens, and they're making a decision in March on that in terms of the tariffs there. So that's a kicker. If they get this US business right and firing again with this acquisition, couple that with they've held back some of the Penfolds good stuff, as you do yeah. for the Chinese market. And the, good, and the good thing about wine is that it actually increases in value as it gets older. So holding it back means that you can charge even more for it. It's like owning a garden yeah, centre. Yeah. Your, your plants, as they get bigger, you can sell them for more money. So it's, it's beautiful business model. Yep. So um, I like the US side of things. They did raise money. They've raised a lot of money to pay for this uh, Dow Vineyards business. And, you know, I think the jury's a little bit out still on that. But I think, you know, with China, with the US continuing their economies going well, I'm a buyer of Treasury Wine Estates. You're a buy. It's a buy at $11.40 for Treasury Wine Estates. All right, we're moving on to another big Aussie company now, ResMed ASX RMD, currently $27.78. Uh, look, ResMed, now, now that Apple has their Apple Vision Pro, I think it's going to be cool to wear devices on your face. So I think right. that's it's that's what it's got going for it. Um, maybe there's an opportunity even to cross over here, right? Like a sleep machine combined with an Apple Vision Pro, you can drift off to sleep while watching Netflix um, while driving your Tesla, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Henry, yeah. is ResMed a buy or sell for you? Let me tell you, Adam, as a user of one of their CPAP machines, there is nothing romantic or even vaguely attractive about wearing the Dam Buster mask in bed <laughs> and trying with Barnes Wallace to, uh, to knock out one of the dams on the Ruhr. Trust me. If you were wearing the goggles and the face mask, you might yeah. as well give up. Your partner is never going to look at you in the same way. So I just, I just put that out there now. Virtual partners, we will have a virtual partner inside our Apple Vision with our sleep machine face mask. We won't need partners, Henry. That's about as close as you're going to get to a partner. Trust me. Um, <laughs> the Resmed, it, it's it's a question of price. Again, these guys uh, got sold down from thirty six bucks. Again, it's un Australian not to like Resmed, isn't yeah. it? Um, yep. They got sold down from 36 bucks to the low 20s on the back of a Zempic. The theory being that yeah. because everyone was going to get thin, they were going to not have to use a CPAP machine, which, yeah, 
that's we'll wait and see. Mm. The, the problem I have with ResMed is that it's one of those businesses where you have to keep finding new customers. And the customers yep. you do find, there is a barrier after about nine or 10 months when a lot of people stop using them and giving up and the machine just sits there because as I say, it's not the most romantic thing in the world and there's, mm. there's other issues with it. It is fantastic. I've got to say, as a, yeah. but it does just blow air up your nose. There's, <laughs> there's nothing, you know, I know they pretend it's all really scientific and all pressurized yeah. and all this sort of stuff, but at the end of the day, it just blows air up your nose. And, mm. uh, I just struggle with the fact that you keep having to replace and find new customers. Now the, mar yeah. the margins are good. There's no, it's not. It's not like um, you get annual recurring revenue out of it. Uh, the rev mm. the revenue upside is from buying a new mask. Well, let me tell you, they're all pretty crap, and yeah. they don't. None of them look particularly good. Or they bring in a new machine. And the other problem I find with ResMed is that all the machines, all the competitors, the machines cost around the same amount of money. So there's not yeah. much differentiating them. They have had a massive free kick from Philips, which had some issues with their foam degrading yeah. and people breathing that in, and it's uh, caused harmful effects. And Philips are basically out of the game now. But there are other people out there. At these kind of prices, it's it's a hold. I think, you know, in the low 20s, it's yep. a buy. In the mid-30s, it's a sell. At 27, 28 bucks, it's a hold. It's a great business with a great product, but they just have to keep replacing customers and finding new customers mm. and there's no real well, i mean once you bought your machine they last yeah. for a decade that's it you're done right. and I guess even if you stop using it that i don't imagine there's a big demand in the second hand market for a second hand sleep machine that's been up someone's nose I, yeah I, maybe I, there is I, 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 the, that's not, something, not a path i'd go down so i guess there, there, there'd be a positive in that most people would buy new perhaps most people buy new there is a obviously there's a rental market as well which uh right. you know you, you can rent the machine and i guess that is in some ways a second hand machine because at the end of the day yeah, yeah. the machine itself is is not something that is the that's the major problem is the tubing and the the mask etc. Yeah, so yeah. you get all of that new, but uh, yeah, I, there, there isn't a massive second hand market. I have to say, as a, yeah. you know, people tend to buy them and they just wear them out. You know, they'll last a decade yeah. and that's it. Once they're done, they're done, and you just upgrade and chuck the other one in the bin. Yeah. Yep. All right. So ResMed. So sorry, that's a buy, a sell, or a hold. That's that a, that's a hold. That's a hold. We're holding ResMed. Uh, all right, let's take a break here. A uh, quick nap, perhaps, all this talk of sleep. Yeah. Uh, or, we could, uh, or we could perhaps grab another Long Island iced tea. <laughs> but uh, we'll do that and be back with more uh, buy or sell right after this. Welcome back. You're in the No Holds Bar. We're doing buy or sell and some holds here with uh, Henry Denning, Senior Market Analyst at Marcus today. And we are now going to talk about Zip Co Limited, ASX Zip, currently trading at $0.84. And Henry, I've got to tell you, I bought Zip at $8, currently trading at $0.84. Cents. So that's a nice 10 bagger for me. Well done. Uh, is, is it a buy or a sell for you? Adam, you're not alone. There's a lot of people right. that uh, fell in that love. Makes me feel so much better. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> There's a lot of people that fell in love with the Zip story. Zip actually was my uh, Osby's Advent Calendar pick for 2024 at 39 cents as the one to have. Um, right, and it's it's done pretty well, probably quicker than I thought. I don't, and the reason I, I got to say the reason I picked it really was at the time we had the Cyber Monday, the Black Friday, the whole. US retail sales was gearing up in November and they were going like gangbusters and and, yeah. and to my way of thinking the US is really only just discovering buy now pay later a firm numbers have been very good very solid and you know in the US the retail sector is still going well they're still buying stuff they're just changing the way they're paying for it I think uh, yeah. so for me that that really played into zips hands they have become more disciplined, as have lots of tech companies, thankfully. They have paired things back. They have looked at two, I guess, two stroke, three major sources of their revenue, which is Australia and New Zealand. So let's count that as one. And America, which is the yep. the, the, the big sort of prize. Uh, they're, they're not alone in the US. Obviously, there's a firm, there's Klarna, 
uh, there's uh, Afterpay, etc. But there's probably a big enough market for everybody. These guys are coming out of the shadow and the hatred of buy now, pay later. As I say, I was a, a pretty highly convicted buyer around 38, 39 cents. It's now doubled in a bit. My target's a yeah. dollar. I would like to see it drift back a little bit more before I got convicted again. But uh, mm. certainly, you know, when you look at what's coming out of satire and looking at what's coming out of our retail numbers, you know, retail is not dead. Uh, and buy now, pay later, it's taken a while to get back into the good books, I guess, and to avoid the scrutiny that it had. There's still some regulations to come. But uh, yep. for me, Zip is probably, it's, it's a buy here, although the risk reward is, is slightly uh, less less attractive than it was, I guess, because it has run pretty hard. May need to consolidate yeah. a little bit, but I think, you know, we'll see this above a dollar, dollar uh, ten as the year goes by, as we see retail and interest rate cuts come through and the, and the consumer continuing to spend. So it's, um, right. it's one I like. So at 84 cents, it's a buy. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it drifts quite a bit higher, actually, Henry. Maybe somewhere around the eight dollars would be would be somewhere I'd be happy with. Well, maybe if they have a consolidation, maybe a one for ten, you might get lucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Next up, we're looking at mineral resources. ASX M I N currently fifty nine dollars seventy five. Uh, mineral resources initially, uh, I thought they had typos all through their website until I worked out uh, Minres is actually an abbreviation of the company, and they weren't just continually misspelling miners. Uh, right. Henry, mineral resources buy or sell. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare for Grammarly, isn't it, that one? Um, <laughs> mineral, mineral resources, Minres, they've got kind of three planks to their business. They've got the iron ore business, they've got the lithium business as well, and they've got mining services. Chris Ellison has done a, a, a stunningly good job in building this company. I, I think, yeah. you know, lithium has really dragged this one down. The iron ore price has, has held up astonishingly well. It's the one commodity, I guess, that has held up extraordinarily well. And people are scratching their heads of why it's 130 bucks US mm. uh, a ton. It's a very sentiment driven stock. I, I would say this is a buy only yeah. because it has fallen so hard. And I think I think there is a, a slight bottom in sight for the lithium price. I, I, you know, it, it may be a little early, but uh, yep. we are seeing some signs that it is stabilizing. At the end of the day, I don't think there's any coincidence that as soon as they released a contract in China on, on lithium pricing, all it did was go down. You know, it, it yeah, just right. just seems to be a one way slide to oblivion. But uh, there are signs that it is. People get overexcited about about lithium, like it was the the battery, the the battery, the yeah. EV thing. Yeah. Was just too much hype. Is, is that well, what happened? I, I think that is partly what happened. Also, you got to remember that it, it's a very new commodity. You know. Yeah. Gold has been trading for thousands of years. Copper, yeah, the same yeah. sort of thing. Nickel, all the all the base metals, all the even uranium, which you know we're going through a bit of a uranium buzz at the moment. The the, the oldest, well, the average age of a U.S. nuclear reactor is forty two years. So uranium trading has been around for a while. EVs have been around for you know really and truly five ten years, and yeah. the trade in lithium is very very new. Very new. Yeah. So I think, you know, nobody really knows what it's going to trade like until it settles down, until you get some history. So it did get massively overhyped. No question about that, Adam. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we've seen that time and time again with, with markets. They get momentum takes them all the way up and then it takes yeah. them all the way down and they sh overshoot both ways. The, the truth yeah, yeah. kind of lies somewhere in the middle. But uh, there are some... Some small signs, I guess, that the lithium price is starting to stabilize. When you look at the pricing outside of China, it's a far more optimistic outlook. But the yeah. stuff that's trying, it's also very hard to, to price lithium because everything's a bit different. And, you, you know, you ask someone whether it's spodumene or whatever, whatever form, it kind of gets a different answer. And yeah, everybody's yeah. got contracts linked to different things. So it's not like gold. Gold's just, you know, you've got an ounce of gold. You know exactly what it looks yeah, like. Yeah. You've got, yeah. you've got a pound of lithium. What does that look like? Is it carbonate? Is yeah. It, you know, what does it look like? So I, I think for me, this is this is a, a buy here. Uh, this only is be, a buy? Yeah, this is a buy. Let's be a little bit um, a little bit courageous. It, it is a buy here. It's, you know, it could be 
volatile to say the least, but he's a class act. It's a class company, but lithium is the key. The sentiment is the key to this one. Okay. All right. So uh, mineral resources is a buy. Next up, we're looking at, this is one of three miners that we're looking at today. Yep. Uh, or as I like to say, it's all mine, mine, mine. Mine, mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so we had mineral resources. Now we're looking at Lion Town resources, ASX LTR, currently at $1.18. And I read something that Lion Town were asking for a government bailout. That can't be a good sign, surely. I know. Well, that's not a good sign. I don't think Lion Town's actually asking for a government bailout. Um, I think you know the industry itself, the lithium industry, right. is hoping that part of this move from the government to put nickel on the critical metals list, which they seem to yep. have done last Friday, although that we still yep. don't really know what that actually means, uh, the lithium will be part of that. The devil is always in the detail. Now, Lion Town is a very right. interesting one, I have to say, Adam. This came from nowhere. And then we had a, a bid, or we actually, I think it was four bids in the end from uh, the US Arbomile yep. for this one, going from, I think it was 250, 260, oh, yeah. 270. Finally, they bid, um, I think it was three bucks. And Gina Reinhardt came along and spoiled the party. And mm. she bought 20% of this one around $3. Now, I know Gina's wealthy, but still. It yeah. hurts. If you buy 20% at three bucks and it's trading, and it was trading at 90 cents, it's had a pretty good rally. Yeah. Uh, it does hurt. You know, that was probably a billion bucks. And mm. the the whole 20% scuppered the bid. Albemarle walked off into the sunset, probably breathing a yep. massive sigh of relief, going, wow, oh, dodged a <laughs> bullet there. That could have been nasty. That could have been like BHP buying Oz Minerals or IGO buying Western Areas. I mean, that was a yeah, right. that was a bullet dodged. The, the interesting thing come and also with Lion Town, they are building a big, big uh, lithium mine called Kathleen Valley, and yep. they had bank funding and a big funding package to do so. Unfortunately, the banks were relying on one particular analyst at Wood Mackenzie for their price forecast in terms of long term lithium pricing, and he changed it. And as a result, the banks went, oh, hang on a second. We don't like right. we don't like that. It doesn't make any sense anymore. So they pulled the pin. So there is a funding issue for Lion Town for Kathleen Valley. They do have a pile of cash because they very astutely, after Gina bought the 20% and Albemarle walked off, they did then hit the market for a capital raise at $1.80, which made life interesting. Right. The attraction at the moment, I guess, is Gina is now free to bid for Lion Town. Up till right. up till now, if she was going to bid, she would have to pay the highest price that she paid in the market. Those are the rules. But after four months, when the thing is now done and dusted, she can bid dollar, dollar, right. dollar twenty, dollar fifty instead of three bucks she paid. So that so was that her plan all along. Is that is that a sort of strategic? <laughs> I don't think she had a plan to be honest. <laughs> I mean, a billion dollars is just kind of pocket change for Gina Reinhardt, right? Uh, like she can... Yeah, I think she wanted a seat at the table. It's a very expensive right. seat. It's more like a throne. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think she wanted an expensive seat at the table. She did get one in some respects because as a sort of a, a side issue to the Lion Town thing that happened, there's another company called Azure Minerals, uh, which yeah. has got a lithium project at Andover, which was looking pretty, uh, pretty impressive. And she teamed up with uh, South American SQM to make a joint bid for it. So she got her seat at that table, uh, which is right. which is good. But um, yeah, I, I, I really would like to be the fly on the wall for the conversation between her and her broking advisor on that Lion Town deal because I'm, yeah. I'm not sure he would have got the bottle of scotch at Christmas or the Christmas card for that one. Um, <laughs> I think he might be le might have been left off the party list for, um, for, for Hancock Press Box. Uh, yeah. prospecting so yeah it remains to be seen oh. what she does but you kind of have to they've got cash the funding is the issue yep. uh, the market knows that they're trying to sort it out with a smaller package uh, yep. as you say but um yeah at the moment it's going okay it, it's probably a hold here for you know for interest sake because you, you never yeah. know what gina's going to do but uh below well, below well. below a dollar it's probably a buy and i always reckon yep. that you know if it was good enough for Gina to pay three bucks and Garma Mile to offer three yeah. bucks, then 
it was good enough for me to be buying them below a dollar. You're getting a lot better. Let someone else do the research. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my motto. Yeah. If someone else has done the research and decided it's worth three bucks, then surely it's good for me at a dollar eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, very good. All right. The last of the miners here. Uh, Pil- Pilbara Minerals, ASX PLS, currently $3.71. Henry, Pilbara Minerals, a buyer or a sell for you? Um, th- th- this is another interesting one, Adam, I have to say. It- right. It's probably a buy in the in the short yep. term. We've got results out on Thursday. I'm not sure when this goes to air, but we've got results out this Thursday. Uh, this-, this is actually a producer of lithium. This isn't a pie, you know, a pie in the sky. You know, hopefully we'll get some funding and we'll get the mine up and running. These are these guys are actually producing lithium. Not only are they producing lithium, they have two billion dollars in cash, so they've got a pretty nice big fat buffer there. Uh, to be honest, uh, they are expanding the mine, so they're spending some yep. money to get it bigger. And they also got a JV with with uh, POSCO in South Korea on on the actual sort of the added value side of things. So that's good. That's all good. Lithium price bad. Mm. producing good so at least if the lithium price improves they can take advantage of it the interesting thing is this stock has got 21 percent of its stock shorted i just looked it up again because i I look at it from time to time and it did drop recently there are 632 million shares shorted in pil in pilbara I, I find that extraordinary. So there's there's clear. What is an average? What is an average sort of uh, similarly sized company? You know, like I, I haven't how, seen how much, short, how much shorting typically happens in a company of their size. Are we sort of ten percent? Yeah, 5%? I mean, I, always some. I, I, you know, I think ten percent is probably about. Yeah. You know, we, we've seen it before with you know, things like Flight Center were always well shorted. Harvey Norman well shorted as well. 10, yep. 13%, but 21% in yeah. a volatile mining company, as, yep. uh, which was especially interesting given that there was all this um, M&A going on, as we talked about with Azure, we talked about with Liontown, with Albemarle. You know, it wasn't out of the question, I guess, that mm. some big boy still isn't comes along, just plonks down a check and goes, you know what, we want to get into the lithium business. Pilbara's our, yep. Pilbara's our go. We're going to pay yep. $12 billion for it and, um, you know, off we yep. go. Uh, in which case, I wouldn't like to be short part of those. A lot of unhappy short sellers, yeah. Yeah. So um, results, as I say, very shortly. It'll be interesting. Yep. They've, they've got a pile of cash they are producing. It is my go. If you want to play the lithium market for from a more secure base in terms of it's a producer, you know, it's a known producer. It, it does what it says on the tin. It's actually producing product and it's selling it. It's got long term contracts. This is yep. the way to go. It's three dollars eighty or something. If if it got the vaguest bit of good news and the and the shorts panicked, you know, yeah, I, I try to find that cartoon of when there's um. I think there was a, a dog in the middle of a herd of um, lambs or a herd of sheep and, yeah. and, or chickens when they don't want to spook uh, the animals. Uh, I think this one could really spook the animals. If you saw a good result, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that it would, uh, it would take a lot of, um, yeah, it would, it would take a lot of uh, guts to, to keep you short yeah. and not panic yeah. a bit. So, scare the pants off you or scare the shorts off you, as it would. Uh, scare the shorts off you, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so I, I kind of like this one. Um, it's, yeah. it's been lower. It's been higher. <coughs> Excuse me. But it has. it is a producer. It has got cash. It yeah. will survive. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that is a hold currently, but, but I watch this space yeah. very much on Pilbara Minerals. All right, we're looking at Drone Shield Limited, ASX DRO, currently trading at 72 cents. And Drone Shield is up 75% in the last month. Now, I understand most of that's due to selling their tech and, and things to the, the US military, among other militaries. Yeah. Um, and they haven't even tapped into the consumer market yet, Henry, which I'm most excited about. I can't wait to see, to, to be able to start taking down drones around my neighborhood. Uh, yeah, is drone ship a buy or a sell for you at the moment? Um, it has been a buy in the past. It has had a, yeah. a really good uh, period of time, and, I, and unfortunately, we the reason why it's had such a good run is, is predicated, I guess, on on the rise of drone use on the battlefield. You know, yeah, sure. In, in Ukraine, uh, obviously, there's the Houthis as well in the Red Sea, yeah. etc. And I'm sure that the Israelis are using them as well, or Hamas. 
using drones. So it, it is kind of the 21st century weapon of choice to some extent, drone warfare. Um, and these guys actually, you know, they're, they're the anti-drones. And uh, yeah. it's, it's a very interesting company, I have to say. They've got cash. Uh, they had around $58 million in cash at the end of the year. They got no debt. Uh, they've got a project uh, backlog in terms of orders for over 400 million bucks. It is an, an Aussie company, but very US focused, as you rightly say. Yeah. Um, sales, inevitably, unfortunately, I guess, or tragically, uh, are, are going very well because drones are becoming a far bigger use on the battlefield. And they really have some pretty impressive technology. I, I sat down yeah. and interviewed the CEO uh, a little while ago, and you know, it was it's just fascinating stuff in terms of what they can do, how they can do it. It's not just a matter of, you know, the drone comes over and you shoot it down. Mm. You know, that that's easy. But, you know, if, if, if you're, uh, that may be what, what you need to do, but if, uh, you know, if, if you... Well, that's what we're doing up till now, but I want a more, a more humane approach. Well, yeah. I don't want yeah, to yeah, the, the sky. People take that as a sign of aggression. I feel like there's a more diplomatic approach, which would be just to disable yeah. the drone and bring it down great. Well, that, that's exactly what these guys do to some extent, because... You know, if, if you bring down a, a, an armed drone with a with a with a payload of uh, explosives on it, and you just bring it down, shoot it down, yeah, it could yeah. it could kind of land anywhere. Um, so these guys disable it and yeah, basically yeah. take control of uh, of the drone, and then they can basically fly it back to where it's safe. So, and, and they've got multiple yeah. uh, multiple kind of uh, ways of doing that, from sort of handheld devices, which look a bit like a uh, a, a sort of a, a rifle on steroids to, um, you know, ones mounted on military vehicles. Uh, they protect yep. airports, they protect government facilities. And as drones get more and more complicated and complex and more dangerous for normal people, mm. then, you know, at the end of the day, you are going to need to fight fire with fire. And these guys seem to be, you know, really, really, you know, embedded with Homeland Security, embedded with the US yeah. big time. They've got new products coming along. I, I like Drone Shield, and and you know, it's a big ten billion dollar addressable market. They reckon US. Yeah. So you know, it, it's is there, is there a is there a sort of the same similar ESG concerns that we might have with uh, with gaming companies? So we've mentioned Light and Wonder and, yeah. and Aristocrat. You know, people may may shy away from investing in companies like that for for ESG type reasons. It, is it the same with yeah. tools of war and, yeah. And, and yeah yeah very very much so i mean that that it, it does esg does fall into uh, you know people that build weapons but these guys yeah. are anti weapons you know they they build yeah. they're build they're not building drones to kill people they're building yeah. you know they've got guns a drone gun which basically mm -hmm. tames the drone so that they're, they're taking the threat out of the sky it's you know it's it's a security system for mm. you know soldiers just, for whatever yeah, it's neighborhood watch. <laughs> it's very complex technology, but it's just nice and you know, it's nice and fluffy neighborhood watch. You know, you you, yeah. you aim your gun at the drone and it just falls out the sky. And it just falls drops at your feet. Yeah. You can un unravel your Amazon package or whatever. It happens to be explosives. Be a bit, oh, well, be a bit more careful. Too, I suppose, isn't it? If yeah. people just start stealing Amazon packages out of the sky by taming the the delivery drones. Yeah, and, well, uh, I think that, it is a new world we're living in. Henry, a very, it's very sure. very brave new world. <laughs> Uh, all right, it's time for last drinks here in the No Holds Bar. And the last one we're looking at today is GQ... G I'll start that again. The last one we're looking at today is GQG Partners, ASX GQG, currently $2.20, uh, an investment boutique, they call themselves. What are we looking at here, Henry? Is it an investment boutique, just they're all in ladies' jewellery and high-end fashion? Is that is that what we're looking at? I'm not sure that's in the company description, but <laughs> may, maybe if they look to diversify it, and that that could be another plank. Yeah. I'm sure right. they probably have investments in ladies' boutiques, but but these yeah. guys are a, very similar in a lot of respects to Magellan. Uh, they're, right. they're they're a fund manager. Um, they they have a number of funds, and and fund management is a very simple business. There, there's nothing particularly complicated about funds management. The idea is that you your pile of money, yeah. if you can make it perform better than your benchmark and your peers, 
yeah. then all you have to do is market the hell out of that pile of money and your fund yep. and you get more money. And the good thing is that if you... It, to be true. That's too easy to be true. Well, it is. And it was a very successful formula for Magellan for a long time. Unfortunately, they stopped performing. Yeah. And as a result, their pile of money started dwindling and then they lost Hamish yeah. and then it all collapsed in on itself. Yeah. GQG... It's hard to market a small pile of money. It, it does get hard. And not only is it harder to, but it takes a lot more time because of the way the returns work. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're kind of living on your past for a long time. And, and, yep. and so that's good if it's good, but it's bad if it's bad. Now, these guys uh, are, I guess, one of the, the biggest fund managers that we've got around, $120 billion under funds management. And unlike a lot of fund managers who are losing the race to ETFs and money pouring into ETFs and out of actively managed funds, these guys are actually bringing in inflows. And the good thing as well is that because they're invested in the market, when the markets go up, their, yep. their pile, if the market goes up 10% and they've got $100 billion under management, then they've got $110 billion under management and they get fees on the, yep. the 10%. So it's all a nice little sort of round robin for these guys. They put a lot of money and a lot of effort into, there was a short selling attack on Adani in India. These guys uh, invested, right. invested heavily, did very well out of that. And, and they're very, very shrewd investors. Their performance has been good. Their marketing has been good. The flows into the fund has been good. They're not as rock starry out there as, as Hamish and Magellan were in, in their heyday, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, they, they're sort of quiet achievers, a bit secretive in some respects, but the stock price has pretty much gone from a dollar thirty to $2.20 since November because mm. they've been sucking in money where everyone else has been losing money. So. I think that's going to continue. I like this one. I think we could easily see this at, you know, it's 220 now. It's it's not, you know, it's not a zip. It's not going to double. Yeah. Um, yep. But you could easily continue to see funds under management grow and grow. And as long as the markets continue to go well, and those guys have also got quite good exposure to India, which is, you know, becoming the alternative to China, uh, to some investors, then I think, you know, you could easily see 250, 260 in this one. It pays a, a decent yield as well. Um, yep. And as I say, it's it's one of the few funds that are growing their funds under management. Performance is good. Uh, they are doing all the right things. You know, it's... it's it, and do, you, do you consider something like GQG is that slightly lower risk than, um, you know, like, like we've talked about some other stocks today? rather than trying to pick one of those, you go with something like GQG. Is it inherently lower risk because it's diversified or is it still the same sort of risk profile? It's it's the same sort of risk profile. It, it has leverage to equity markets. It has leverage to yeah. global equity markets. The other problem with a stock like GQG, and this, this applies, I guess, to any, any company to some extent, is that the assets of the company are the people and they walk out the door every night. Right. So, so if those people don't walk back in the following yeah. day for whatever reason, um, yep. you know whether they get hit by the proverbial bus or whether they leave to a to a competitor, that does disrupt the flow of the force. However, mm. you know you'd like to think the machine once you've built the machine, it's bigger than one person. We've seen that with Macquarie yeah. with Nico Kane. He was the rainmaker there leaving. So you'd like to think yep. the machine is bigger than one person. However, mm. you know when you look at what happened with Magellan, you do have that key man risk. You know, Hamish yeah, Douglas yeah. was the rainmaker, the guru, the you know, the rock star. Uh, and when mm. he stuffed up and things started going awry, you do have that key man risk. I think GQG and others have learned that, uh, have learned, yeah. but still, you know, the CIO is a key man risk. It's not like you know, if you're if you're the CEO of Commonwealth Bank, for instance. It, do, mm. it doesn't matter if the CEOs change, to be honest. The machine yep. is so big and so yeah. entrenched that you just keep cranking the handle and the money drops out. Whereas GQG, yeah, it relies on a team of people led by one man, perhaps, uh, to uh, yeah. to make the big calls, make the good calls, to keep things going. So there there is a risk there, but it has got you know, it is leveraged to the uh, global equity market. So. If, yep. if we had a 10% fall in the US market or globally, then you know, yep. these guys would suffer. But uh, okay. all things being equal, hopefully, yep. fingers crossed, Adam, that uh, things don't, right. don't work that way. You know, I think this one's yep. got great potential this year uh, as it kind of emerges 
just getting bigger and bigger and it's you know just yeah. like a snowball you push it down the mountain and it gradually just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger just watch that money ball just just getting bigger hopefully it doesn't oh, knock you over nice in the process <laughs> <laughs> i think there's a car sure. i remember a cartoon where the snowball comes racing down the mountain and there's someone in yeah. in front of it just gets absolutely splatted so <laughs> so you, you don't want to be that someone uh, excellent. All right, Henry. Uh, look, that does it. That's it. Uh, that's that's everything we we had today. We, we've done uh, done our dash. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, uh, Head to the contact page on the Equity Mates website if there's a stock that you want to hear uh, on buy or sell. But um, but Henry, yeah, big thank you for coming on. Uh, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Adam. Uh, where can people find you if they'd like uh, if they'd like more more Henry Jennings? Where can they find you? I'll be at the uh, the bar with my Long Island iced tea, <laughs> so they, they can always find me at the bar. If, if not, uh, at a stretch, yeah. uh, MarcusToday.com.au. Uh, we uh, have a financial newsletter there, so you can sign up for a two week yep. free trial, etc. So yeah, but I, I prefer the bar myself, but um, the bar. Oh, that's, mate, that, I will, that's just I will me. You there. That's just me. Give me 10 minutes and I'll see you there. <laughs> thank you once again. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, and Thanks, thank Adam. you for joining us. Hopefully you'll join me next time on buy or sell. But until then, it is bye for now.